Hello everyone and welcome back to this new section on error handling. So how does error handling work in Nest.js? Let's take here an example, for example, of the update course method here in our courses controller. So the goal of this method is to update an existing course entity. As we can see, one of the parameters is the course ID, identifying the entity that we want to update. And here we receive the properties that we want to modify. Now, an important thing in the implementation of this update course method is to make sure that in these properties here of the course, we are not receiving a new version of the course ID. So we don't want to accidentally overwrite the identifier of this entity on the database because then the course would become a completely new entity that might trigger data corruption problems in our application in case this ID was being used elsewhere to link to this particular course. So here we want to add some sort of validation. We want to make sure that these changes are not accidentally overwriting the identifier of the course. We might also want to add extra business validation rules, such as, for example, the properties of a course should obey certain rules. Let's have a look how could we trigger a validation error and send an appropriate response back to the client. Taking the example here of the update course method, we want to first check if the ID is being accidentally overwritten. So we can do so by accessing here changes and making sure that the ID property is not filled in. If it is filled in, then we have here an error. We can throw an error here from a Nest.js controller by using the Nest.js HTTP exception. So let's go ahead and create here a new instance of this exception, which should be imported from the Nest.js common package. Now to this exception, we need to pass two arguments. The first argument contains, for example, a message that we want to send back to the client. So let's add here, for example, the message can't update course ID. And the second argument that we pass to HTTP exception is the status code that we want to send back. So in this case, we want to send back a 400 bad request. With this logic in place, if by accident we fill in this property, this error is going to be thrown and the update is not going to be performed. Now this error is going to be caught by a global default Nest.js exception handler that is going to send us back a predefined response. We are going to see later on how to override that default behavior if we need to. Now let's first test this simple error handling logic. In order to do that, we are going to need to form a bad request. Now a simple way of forming a bad request is to use our application here. So let's go ahead and go to this dialog here, the edit course dialog, where we are trying to edit a course entity. And let's add some logic that is going to corrupt our HTTP request. Let's say that accidentally here we had a bug. And besides filling in here the multiple properties of the form, we accidentally also filled in here the underscore ID property, let's say with the value one. So any value that when checked here with this condition would end up throwing the exception. So the value one is a good example of that. Let's also add here a comment so that we don't forget to remove this later. Let's mention here that this is a simulated bug. Let's now try this malformed request here in a larger window. We're going to open here the edit course dialog and let's make here some changes. We're going to click on save and we're going to keep an eye here on the network log. So if we now click save, indeed, we get back here the status code bad request on the put call. And here on the response, we have our message can't update course ID status code 400 as expected. So as you can see, our malformed request triggered here our validation logic in our course controller. So throwing HTTP exceptions from your controller is a good way of sending back to the client a specific status code and a specific error message. But even better than using directly the HTTP exception here in our controllers is to subclass it and create our own custom exceptions, for example, for reporting business errors. We are going to see later on in the course how to subclass HTTP exception. Right now, let's give a couple more examples available on the Nest.js common package of commonly needed HTTP exceptions. 
By going over the Nest.js documentation, we are going to see that we already have available all these subclasses of HTTP exception for common problems such as a bad request exception, which is our case, unauthorized or not found exception, forbidden exception, etc. So we already have all these exceptions that return the corresponding status code as per REST conventions. For example, throwing a not found exception is going to send back a 404 not found status code to the client. In the particular case of our existing business validation, what we need here is a bad request exception, which comes from the Nest.js package. So this exception, because it models the bad request exception, does not need here a status code. This is going to be automatically filled in with 400. And our code is a bit more readable, we know better what is happening here. Now that we know the basics of error handling with Nest.js, let's see how can we customize our error response. Let's see how can we specify different error handling for different types of exceptions. Let's add a fallback catch all exception handler. And later on in the course, we are going to see how to use Nest.js to validate our input parameters, checking, for example, if the values provided here are actually valid properties according to the definition of a course. So we will be able to check, for example, if sequence number is being filled in with a numeric field, URL with a string, etc. We will be able to do full validation of this interface according to its type definitions. Before doing that, let's learn how to customize the error response sent to the client in the case of a particular error, for example, an HTTP exception. 